Anything good in the news today? No, not particularly. Is there ever anything good in the news? Uh, no news is good news. That's literally a saying. Good news is bad news because good news doesn't sell papers. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I am the lowest common denominator. What do you want? I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. Cesspool of disease and bacteria. Anything I show you on the internet is fact now. You just walk around using your lips. I have full lips, but I also have a very tiny tongue. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. Uh, Episode 10. We've been doing this thing. It's almost like, I I don't know, is it our season finale? We're not signing off. We're not going to take next week off or anything. It does feel like we met a milestone, though. No, but I do like that we talk about, oh, we, you know, we got to stop celebrating each episode. And then I keep... And then you keep bringing it up. You know, every week I'm a little surprised that you continue to come into the studio and do it. This week, this week we actually put money on the line, so I guess now you're going to have to continue to do it with me. Oh, what did we bet? I No, no, not a bet. I'm saying we spent some money this week. We've got professional hosting now. Oh, we yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. we There's a thing that we, we ponied <laughs> that's up That's how for. much I don't care. Yeah, well, it's a very small <laughs> amount of money for you, and you were like, I, you need to stop talking about it now, one guy, and just move on. I've already said yes. I, I, I spent a lot of time pitching you on that. Um, we're in iTunes. Uh, that's the big news today. We're finally in iTunes. You can uh, search for us, Two Guys, One Podcast. We're way down right now until more people subscribe and and, and uh, review us. If you've listened to the show and enjoyed it, please. Are you, are you going to review us? I, no, because that's like debating, isn't it? You know, <laughs> it's a week nice. late, but I'm there. I'm there. I was well, speaking I, hey, of. Winner, winner. That's I'll right. give that to you. We got a uh, we, Man, nobody won good. last week. Thanks. Yeah, that was good, dude. Uh, we we uh, we need to go early this week, by the way, and do the the word of the day so we can actually use it uh, in the podcast oh, instead man, of thirty I'm minutes so into recording. Impressed. I can't like. Oh, that you, you didn't ask. even think about it. Didn't even didn't even cross my mind. I assumed you would serve that one up for me. Like, no. hey, are you gonna? No. no. Yeah. No, I thought about it today. I mean, yes. Yes. I did. You're yes, welcome. You did. You're welcome. I get the assist. Yeah, I get. I just got my wing, my wingman. That's guy, right. That's badge. right. You got your wingman badge. Um, yeah. So you can find us in iTunes. Uh, if you're already happy with the way that you're listening to the podcast, don't worry about it. Keep doing it just that same way. Uh, unless if you would subscribe to our feed, the feed has changed now. But just go to uh, our Tumblr page, two guys one pod dot tumblr dot com, two guys one pod dot tumblr dot com. You can click the um, subscribe in iTunes button there. You can. Uh, just play it right there on our, our blog. Uh, you can even play us on Facebook now, man. That's the beauty. We went with um, libsyn.com. If, if, you, if you're not hosting a podcast, this doesn't really mean anything to you. But um, a professional podcast hosting, they're a great company. I've enjoyed working with them so far. And uh, they're going to make us a lot more accessible. That's the good news for you. So, yay, we're in iTunes. I had my little geek out moment earlier today when I got the email. I, I can almost guarantee uh, that of everything gets edited out of tonight's show, you using the word like debate will definitely not be cut. <laughs> no. I, I can't believe that it I can't believe that you served it up that, that early too. That that worked out really well. So this week I do have another Man Scout badge. Nice. Yeah. It's been a while since we've had a Man Scout. So uh, we man scouting. We've covered now the uh, public health badge. And we've the covered horsemanship. the horsemanship badge. Today's adventures in man scouting. Yes. And this is a good one to get, man. I really like this one. So, in the Boy Scouts, there is a uh, an archaeology badge. Like, you go up and you, you can learn about archaeology, the tools you use. You can set out a grid, you know, hunt for arrowheads, whatever, and you can get the archaeology badge. I think I might have done that, actually, like gone to Poverty Point or something. Yeah, yeah, you get your, you can get your badge for that. But a Man Scout, we get an archaeology badge, too. But you get your archaeology badge when you sleep with someone who is ten years older than you. When <laughs> digging in the fossils, yeah. When you're like fucking twenty one and you're hooking up with a thirty five year old, you you have earned your archaeology badge. I think that's a good one to have, man. I think that's I think that's an experience. I think that's an experience to have. We've talked about how the man scout badges are applicable for women too, of course. Yeah, this is one. You know, generally, when a younger guy is with an older woman, I don't think guys ever have a problem with it. 
Like, no guy ever looks at them and goes, what is he doing with her? Yeah, but I think it's easier now. than back Because back in the day, you didn't have the term cougar. So it's much harder to... Def- MILF was around even when you and I were in high school, though. That I mean, that came from the, the American Pie thing, right? Right. But a MILF is a mom I would like to fuck. A cougar is a mom who would like to fuck me. Ah, yes. Yes, good call. Good call. Yeah, you're right. Cougar was not around. No, cougar was not around. Cougar was frowned upon. So it was much harder... To get your archaeology badge, then. Well, I don't like know. I think, that... Like I think, if you get a archaeo- if you get your archaeology badge in 2012, there should be an asterisk. Because it's just well, easier now than it was. Well, of course, you've slept with someone ten years yeah. older than you. It's like uh, it's like all these guys coming into the NBA right now, like breaking the youngest with this record, youngest with this record, or whatever. And you're like, that's not fair because they're coming in at 18. Yeah, I think. Well, I think that I think the age changes through the decade. Like I think if you're in the 50s, man. I think if you sleep with a girl who is three years older than you or five years older than you, I think that's a feat. Uh, yeah, well, actually, yeah. I mean, if you're thinking about, like, in 1955, you're, you know, 18 and you yeah. and you hook up with a senior in college. Yeah, like, that's... It's pretty impressive. You're right. Yeah, like, that's... Oh, you, know, you got your archaeology badge. Things were very stratified. Yeah, back when I was 18, 1920, I mean, sleeping with somebody who was in their 30s. Like that's not bad. I don't know about you, but I mean, I in high school, I I knew guys that had gotten involved with you know like divorcees in their like mid and late thirties and things like that, like young younger women who were single again and they had yeah, but you didn't know many of them. No, and it was very scandalous. No, it's not that big a deal. It's not it's not a scandal yeah. at all now. No, no, it wouldn't be that, and it would be more common. There'd be several of them. There'd be like. Several women that were dating several guys. Yeah, so now I think, well, maybe maybe we need to bump it up to 20 years now. 20 gets dicey, man. Why? You're a 20-year-old. Hooking well, up I don't know. There are 40-year-old year old good women. You're right. Yeah. They're, 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 they're Look, you don't have to have good ch- good taste or make good choices to get this badge. <laughs> it can be a sad thing. Yeah. Like, you don't always have to get <laughs> so the winner. So if you bang grandma, you get the archaeology badge. And that's a story in itself. That, that is works. worthy of the badge. That works on its own, too. Yeah. I don't want to bang grandma. There's your Man Scout badge of the week. The archaeology badge. Digging up bones. <laughs> <laughs> I hate shopping. You hate shopping? Yeah, I had to go shopping with my wife and niece today. Why do you hate it so much? Because uh, you should you you should know what you want. If I go shopping, I go for a very particular thing. You don't hate shopping. You hate shopping with women. <laughs> no, there's dudes like this, too. They just wander around? I don't know any dude that that, that shops Uh, aimlessly. I have a really good buddy that I literally have to go shopping with and pick out clothes for because he's so bad at it. Is that guy that way? I bet that guy's that. I bet that guy's a real clothes horse, isn't he? Like he's like he goes to the mall and spends all damn day wandering in shop after shop after shop. Oh no, no, no. The dude's got his. He's got his style down. Like he knows exactly what what he is. No, all right. So he's like, okay, I need a new polo. Done. (laughs) I need some new boat shoes. I need some new Sperry's. You know, I've never once said to myself, you know, I need some new boat shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did you blow up or did it resolve itself and you maintained your cool for the oh, shopping no, trip? Oh, I, no. I, really, I did really well until like the third hour into it. And I just I just snapped. <laughs> you stood all you could stand till you can't stand no more? I was just getting, just getting pissed. Yeah, I was... I was I was a little grumpy. We talked about this before, I think. I'm I'm a mama's boy. I was kind of raised by my... I mean, I, you know, my parents are married. They still are. But dad was always gone. He was. He worked really hard, and then his, his, he spent a lot of time on his hobbies. He was a hunter, and I didn't care to hunt, so I never went to the woods with him. I'd spend time with mom and, and her friends, and we'd go we'd go to the mall a lot. I, I loved it. I loved the trips. I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't want to go to, like, you know, women's clothing stores or something. I thought that was boring. But the idea of going to the commercial retail place, like wherever it was, whether it was, you know, the big superstore or I, any anything where there was any item where I had the mildest interest in. Sears, I was excited to go to Sears because I could go and look at TVs and I could go and look at, at stereos and things like, you know, and toys. They had a toy section back in the day. Yeah, no, I've always been a shopping guy. It, it got so, I literally bought something that I don't even, I don't need. I will never use just to... Get out of a woman's clothing store. Nice, nice. I bought an hourglass. 
I'm 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 not fucking with you. A literal. Did you buy it and then like walk over to where your and wife and niece were and, and flip it? Be like, yeah. here we go. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I flipped it over and carried it around with me. I said, as soon as this last grain of sand falls into that bottom, we're done. It's it. I don't I don't care. I said, if you're in the middle of trying on some clothes, I swear to you, I will walk out and leave your ass. That's hilarious, dude. How well did they make it out of the store, or did no. you leave them? No, yeah, I didn't leave them either. No, you just had to. Yeah, you didn't do either one. You pussed out. That's what you did. I just turned it sideways. There you, go. you pulled a one guy. So you, you were like, <laughs> I didn't really mean it. I just, I just turned it sideways. Made time stand still. Um, we've got uh, a few mistakes from last week's podcast. I want to get to. First off, I couldn't remember Burt Lancaster's name, for God's sakes. I kept saying, you know, the big famous guy that was in From Here to Eternity. Burt Lancaster is the actor uh, in that movie. Um, he did, you know, a ton of other stuff, too. You a fan of Burt's? You don't really like old Hollywood, do you? I don't even know who he is. Burt Lancaster? Really? Yeah, but you don't have to say it with such an inflection that I'm That, that I'm it makes you look like an idiot since I couldn't remember his name a week ago? Yeah, yeah well, no, point. and then first off, you even, you even prefaced it by saying, oh, you're not a fan of old Hollywood. Uh, he's done a ton of stuff. I'm pulling up his IMDb page here right now. Um, he was in Airport, uh, From Here to Eternity, uh, Best Known for, Separate but Equal. No, that's most recently. Let's see. Let's go back to some of his old stuff. The Professionals. That's a good film. I forgot he was in that. The Professional? Like the... Not The Professional. Uh... The Professionals from back in the 50s. It's a Western. Um, he was also in Gunfight at the OK Corral. He played Wyatt Earp in 1957. Um, ooh, he was uh, in the film with uh, Michael, not Michael Douglas, but uh, Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas played uh, Doc Holliday in that movie. It's not a very good movie, and I am about the biggest Doc Holliday fan you can find. So, Wait, which movie wasn't very good? Gunfight at OK Corral. It's yeah, from 1957. Okay. <laughs> no, the Corral was okay. The movie was kind of shitty. <laughs> um, I, I, Burt Lancaster, to me, his so best movie by far. should a shitty movie at the OK Corral. Yes, the shitty movie at the OK Corral. <laughs> Da, da, da. Um, you know, it didn't. Have, it the gunfight's a very small part of it, and I mean, of course, we were spoiled a, a little bit, I guess. Cause, I mean, we were little kids; we were young still when Tombstone came out, and Kevin Costner made Wyatt Earp the same year, right? Like both those films were out back to back in movie theaters. Do you remember this? I don't know, but Tombstone was amazing. Tombstone's the shit, dude. It's such a good movie. I Val Kilmer as Doc Holliday in that informed a tremendous amount of what I thought of as cool for most of my. Like teenage years. Uh, yeah, I I love Val Kilmer, but for only two movies, and I think just about everything else he's ever done is shit. He does make shitty movies. Tombstone is one, and Willow's the other. And after that, Val Kilmer, I don't give a fuck. You really? You're gonna go with Willow for the other Val Kilmer movie? Dude, that's worth it. Mad Mardigan is a badass. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Mad Mardigan is really cool. I'll agree with that. It's an awesome character. But uh, dude, I, Willow is not a good movie. You are so wrong. You're not, you, you are so wrong. So you're not, um, you're not going to give him credit then for um, Batman Forever? Nope. (laughs) Let's see what else he did. Next. Uh, Val Kilmer. He was in. um, The Saint. Heat, dude. 1995. He was in Heat. Don't care. Although he's kind of shitty in Heat. Uh, He was in Top Gun. And the gayest part of the movie he yeah. was, yes. Yeah, it's pretty lame. Uh, Prince of Egypt. You got a problem, Kaczynski? I loved, I loved, loved, loved him in Prince of Egypt. He he played, um, of course, Moses. Yeah, he was the voice of Moses in the animated film Prince of Egypt, which is really good. DreamWorks Animation is one of the first ones that they did uh, on the big screen. Um, hmm. I'm looking at what else he's did. You know, he's about to play, he's getting ready to play Mark Twain, apparently. Is that why he put on all the weight? No, he put on all the weight because he he doesn't like to work out, I think, and he likes to eat. Uh, He was in The Love Guru, which we all know is a wonderful, wonderful film. Um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. He was in Alexander? He played Philip of Macedonia in Alexander? I didn't know that. Huh. At First Sight. The Ghost in the Darkness. I knew there was one more Val Kilmer movie that I loved. The Ghost in the Darkness with Michael Douglas. They play the the two hunters in Africa. The lion movie? Yes. Yeah, don't care. Really? You don't like that movie? Yeah. Oh, he's got that great line at the beginning. He's writing his, you know, he, uh, the whole movie, Val Kilmer's character writes the letters to his sweetheart or his wife, maybe, back in Ireland or whatever. And he's, he's got the line, you, you know how God invented alcohol so that the Irish wouldn't rule the world? He just says it as fact and then moves on to the next thing that he's saying. 
I what a fantastic idea. The the fact that God was like, mm, those Irish, they could take over everything. We'll keep them drunk. It'll be fine. He did the same thing to the Native Americans then. <laughs> So, uh, so not of not a Val Kilmer fan then, other than uh, the no, aforementioned huge, awesome. Huge Val Kilmer fan. You just think he makes a lot of shitty movies. Yeah, huge Val Kilmer fan, but for only two reasons. <laughs> I can't believe on air you would say that Will is a bad movie. Ah, no, I'm and I'm I'm going to stand by it too. I feel free to tell me how I'm wrong. Two guys, one pod at me dot com, or uh, you know, give us feedback on our Facebook page or Tumblr page or whatever. But uh, no, I I just look. I'm a Lucas apologist. I like everything that George Lucas has ever done. I like War, Warwick Davis too. See, here's the thing: is I am not a big George Lucas fan. I generally don't like the stuff that he does. Yeah, you've never even seen Star Wars. Yeah. Um, I I like Warwick Davis. I think he's very funny. I think he's a a pretty good actor too. I think he seems like a very nice fellow. I like Val Kilmer, as we've already established. I even like the odd fantasy film now and again to me though everything before the lord of the rings movies i for the for the 20 years preceding the lord of the rings films i kind of feel like every fantasy film was mostly shite i am he, he, I, we have very different feelings on lord of the rings i like the movies because i like the books i like you love, like the story i love the story i hate peter jackson i hate it and i saw a preview for the hobbit the hobbit and I'm trying so hard not to get my hopes up because I know he's going to do his same shitty ass directing. He's just a motherfucker that has a story that will hold up no matter what. Say what you want to, though. People had taken swings at that, at those books for decades, man. Nobody had ever figured out a way to crack the story and tell it on film. I think even if you think some of his execution and our mutual friend is in this camp, he doesn't think the movies are perfect. He sees a lot of your issues and other issues with the films and wishes there was more stuff from the books in there. But it had to be done by somebody, and he's the one that finally got it done, and he kept a ton of stuff from the books and was very faithful to the idea of the thing. It was fans getting to make it. I think it's worth being applauded. Interesting, though, that we bring up Peter Jackson because we got some listener mail here. DeVale! DeVale is here! Mentioning Peter Jackson, as a matter of fact. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you asked last week. You said, hey, we ought to get some suggestions on movies we can watch and then kind of discuss off-the-wall stuff, great movies, terrible movies, whatever you want to suggest to us. If you want to hear our opinion on something from time to time, we'd be glad to do this. Um, we both like watching movies, and we like talking about them. Cronkite chimed in. Uh, you no, know, we haven't heard from I was thinking about that dude the other day. It had been a couple of weeks. Uh, well, he writes in almost every week. I don't know. I don't always mention him. But, uh, I don't ever read any of them out. Yeah, you, yeah, there you go. T- until you tell me. I need to forward those on to you, no, I you guess. No, you don't. Yeah, no. You don't want me to keep it out of your inbox. Cronkite suggests his first movie that he suggested was called Funny Games. It stars Tim Roth and Naomi Watts. Now, I looked this one up. I like Naomi Watts. Cron- I do, too. And I love Tim Roth. I like Tim Roth, too. Cronkite says... Funny Games is the worst movie that he's ever seen, and he's seen a lot of films. Uh, Funny Games is uh, it's one of these where like uh, it's a young uh, auteur, you know, writer director. He makes a film in college, and then he remakes it with money once people realize that he's got some talent. Like Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two. Same Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two. Remade. More like George Lucas with THX eleven thirty eight, and then he and then he makes he made like a mini film in college version of it, and then he made a full. Uh, a Hollywood movie with TH, uh, THX 1138. That was his first film as a as a professional director. I've never even heard of that movie. Really? Well, I mean, you're you're more fantasy than sci-fi, but it's it's a really um, oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the guy who played oh, shit. He was in The Godfather. He played the 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 consigliere. He played the lawyer. Tom Hagen. What's his name? Robert Duvall. I like Robert Duvall. Robert Duvall plays THX 1138. It's a it's a future world where everybody's just numbers. Nobody has a name. Everybody's the main character is THX 1138. That's a serial number or whatever. It sounds more like a prison movie, really. Uh, it is like a prison movie in that people are programmed and controlled by the state. It's very much a like THX. He's drugged. The everybody's drugged. They're not allowed to think for themselves. He falls like, in love with a like girl. And, um, I'm yeah. It's. It's a very interesting film. You should definitely check it out sometime. I, as a dude who's not real big on Lucas, that's a very un-Lucas Lucas movie. It's the very first one. But anyway, um, Funny Games, the film that uh, Cronkite suggests first, and it was one of these. The the director, and I can't remember his name right now, but he made a short version of this or maybe a foreign language version of this and then remade it himself. 
a few years later with a professional cast, with a big Hollywood cast, Tim Roth and Naomi Watts. It's one of these where Naomi Watts' character is in the home and serial killers happen upon it. You know, terrible, terrible people come into your house and do terrible things to you. Um, it, it's apparently a pretty hard movie. I he call says that it's a terrible. Saturday night, really. A Saturday night. Um, the other movie, though, that he suggested was Dead Alive by Peter Jackson. That's that's the first uh, film from Peter Jackson. He says it's the goriest thing he's ever seen. And again, Cronkite's a dude who likes gory movies. Are you are you really a horror guy? Yeah. A, a schlock and blood and guts, and you mm-hmm. like all of that stuff. Uh, I want to say I may have seen it actually. Dead Alive. Yeah. I, I mean, I worked at a video store for a long time. I just took movies. took everything. Yeah, I took everything home and watched it. So I wouldn't be surprised. I'm like, oh, I've seen this. I have not seen uh, Dead Alive. Uh, there was one other early. I'm about, to, I'm about to pull up the movie cover to see if I've. There was one other seen. early Peter Jackson movie that he made, like Meet the Foibles or something. With was wait, was it, it a puppets. surfer movie? No, uh, there's 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 like evil, disgusting puppets freak puppets or something like and that and it's foibles like a social blunder i think so i think that's the name of it meet the maybe maybe meet the feebles but isn't i that, think it's meet the foibles foible, isn't, that, isn't that what a foible is it's like a faux pas yeah uh some variation of that yeah and anyway i i'm missing a couple of things out of the peter jackson the first thing that i remember peter jackson from is the frighteners with michael jack uh, michael j fox I sort of say michael jackson um you've seen that one right yes love the frighteners you know what i have seen dead alive and i do love that movie cover Really? Yes. Uh, dead, is that the one where like the woman's mouth is opening yeah, up? Yeah, there's a little skull coming out of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen the cover. I've never seen the film though. Um, he Cronkite. I mean, literally described it as uh, the goriest film that I've ever seen. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to handle that one. I'll definitely watch Funny Games though. I'm yeah, down I'm, for that. We should watch Funny Games. Uh, we, we may take a swing at Dead Alive uh, too. If um, he of many names also ch- chimed in with some movie suggestions for us. Um, Hatari, the first one on his list. Um, John Wayne? Yeah, John Wayne, Hardy Krueger, and Red Buttons. Um, Hardy Krueger, he says, by the way, looks a whole lot like our holiday friend. You know who else looks a lot like our holiday friend? Who? Just about everybody in Children of the Corn. <laughs> He's a tall, pale, blonde-headed <laughs> guy from Kansas. It's not hard to look like him, truthfully. Um, Hatari's a great movie, man. A lot of people are involved. Henry Mancini did the music for it. Um, of course, from Pink Panther fame, Baby Elephant Walk, which you've you've heard before, I'm sure. I'm totally not doing it justice now. Anyway, uh, Baby Elephant Walk, the song Baby Elephant Walk is from that movie as well. Henry Mancini did the soundtrack. Costumes are by Edith Head. Uh, it's it's one of, if not, he of many names' favorite movies. Uh, he said that in the email, but I, I remember actually if having somebody, a conversation with him. If somebody writes in, by the way, if somebody writes in and goes, holy fuck, I love Edith Head. Then I'll be like, okay, it's worth mentioning who did the costumes. Other than that, no one gives a rip. Well, he w- he did because he went on to say, if you guys have already seen Hatari, or if you don't want to watch that one, the other film that I'd suggest is also a movie that Edith Head did the costumes for, The Man Who Would Be King. John Huston directed this one. It stars Sean Connery and Michael Caine. And he describes it as definitely a guy movie. I think Sean Connery and Michael Caine in a movie is I like that way he describes something as definitely a guy movie after mentioning a costumer <laughs> in the previous two movies. I think anybody who likes fashion that much can't be trusted. Uh, well, I don't know, though. Uh, you think Sean Connery and Michael Caine ever made a bad movie together? They've made bad movies. <laughs> Not that many, though, right? Both of those guys got uh, a great uh, taste. Uh, anyway, so there's our list of films. We're going to pick a couple out of there and try to watch them over the next couple of weeks. Hatari on our list, The Man Who Would Be King, Dead Alive, and Funny Games. Um, if you've got a film that you would like one guy or the other, or one guy and the other, take a look at. Email it to us, two guys, one pod at me.com. I, I'm voting for Funny Games and The Man Who Would Be King. I'm down with both of those, actually, uh, since I've never seen either one of them. Exactly. Um, I do want to watch Hatari again, and if you haven't seen it, we should see it. But uh, it's it's the coolest thing in the world. John Wayne plays a guy who works in like you know the he's on safari or whatever in Africa, collecting animals for zoos. That's what he does. He captures giraffes and rhinos and hippopotamuses or whatever out in the middle of Africa, the savanna. There you go. I was looking for the word savanna. So he's like the um, oh god, what's his name in Jurassic Park three? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he. As a matter yeah. of fact. Um, the scenes in Jurassic Park where Almost they do same. the 
um, where they where they're in the the trucks running yeah, the through Jeeps the open field and like trying to lasso them and yeah. stuff. All that's ripped straight out of Hatari. Except in Hatari, they do it live on camera. There are people actively catching animals while they're filming. Uh, it's it's really really something. You you we we should check that out that movie out too. Um, that movie's got some great music in it, of course, with Henry Mancini. And one of the things that you and I talked about a lot the past couple of days. Best TV theme songs. I'm watching the new Dallas remake um, with my girlfriend. Nice. Yeah, you appreciate that? I, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's just for you. You just got trained. You, well, by you. Only took me three weeks. Yeah. yeah. I finally <laughs> dropped the current. Anyway, uh, my girlfriend and I are, are watching the new Dallas um, series. Our Romanian friend was involved in the casting on that show. Was he really? Yeah. Oh, man, that's one guy... Like, we've had a couple, we've had two episodes where we've had people, uh, friends of ours in the studio with us. Man, that is one guy I would love to have in the studio with us. He's high on my list. I, I've got a list of people that I that I want to reach out to and be like, hey, the next time you're in our area, you should let us know ahead of time and we'll try to record. We'd love, I'd love to have Such you in the studio. Such a good storyteller. He is. He's a really good storyteller. He's got a funny voice. He giggles all the he time. <laughs> He does. Here's here's the thing. I think part of what makes it so enjoyable watching him tell a story is his mannerisms. And I don't know how that would carry vocally. I think he's expressive enough vocally, and the laughs will oh, will man. come over. He <laughs> he gets so excited, and he gets he gets withdrawn almost because he can't he can't get over how much he's enjoying himself. He's just a dude that loves life. Yeah, when you make that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that could definitely happen. And we'll have guests on from time to time. So we're watching, so I'm watching uh, with my girlfriend, I'm watching the new Dallas show. And I tweet, because every single time this show starts, I just get hyped the fuck up, man. I love that theme song. I tweet out, Dallas, best theme song ever. I immediately get a response. That says you're wrong. I beg to differ. It's not Dallas. The suggestion was made, the Simon and Simon theme song was a better theme song. They're wrong. You and I just started discussing this last night, and and what we ended up doing was spending like, about an like hour and a half. Yeah, we spent about an hour and a half running through YouTube trying to listen to all of the different TV show theme songs that we loved. There are a ton of really great ones. Dallas, in particular, is one that I grew up with. I think it's very epic. I don't know if it's I I I don't know if it's great. It is a very epic and iconic theme song. It's it's so. And which, by the way, it's playing in the background now. You don't have your headphones on, so so you don't know this. Because you never give me headphones. I don't give you. Well, the, we we well here now you can listen to it, and I won't listen to it. It's so big in scope. It's just like the city itself. It's sweeping. It's got that steady beat to it. I, I just love it. I love it so much. I watched the show when I was a kid. My mom and my grandmother watched it, and they loved it. And and I'm really glad they brought it back now with the remake. The only time this theme song ever goes through my head. Is during sex. Why? Do you picture J.R. Ewing while you're having sex? No, I picture myself, but this is my theme music during. <laughs> <Da-da-da-da>. <laughs> tell me, tell me you're Da-da-da. not going to. Tell me you're not going to do that. Da-da-da-da. Next time you're getting busy. Da-da-da-da-da. Yeah, um, I, I don't think that's going to be the a liar. thing. liar. No, I, I don't think that's going to be a thing. I think it would throw my rhythm off, personally. I'll I don't give you rhythm. <laughs> So you said no to the Dallas theme song. Yeah, I think I think it's iconic. I think it's epic. It is not my favorite theme song. Now the Simon and Simon theme song. It was good. I think it's got more than a little bit in common with um, Good Old Boys, the the theme song from Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. And um, and if I had to pick the two, I would take Dukes of Hazard over this. I forgot how good this was actually until we listened to it. That Simon and Simon theme song is great. The show wasn't bad either. The Dukes of Hazard theme song may be a little bit more, well, it's definitely more recognizable yeah. uh, because the show's had a longer life, I think, um, in syndication and everything else. But the lyrics, to me, almost take away from the iconic nature of it. The, the Simon and Simon theme song makes me happier than the Dukes of Hazard theme song. Uh, doesn't mean I like it better. It's It's... It's very, very cool. It's got that funky country kind of vibe to it or whatever. Yeah, uh, just, just having a good time, man. I, I think I might like the Simon, but I'm, I, I'm again, I'm going to come down, I think, almost in every case with, with one without words, with one without lyrics. Um, love the Simon and Simon theme song. 
Knight Rider, though, is the oh, one that you went yeah. to. Yeah, I went straight to Knight Rider because that was the conversation is uh, best theme song without lyrics, and I went straight to Knight Rider over Dallas. We played this for about 10 seconds the other night, and you were immediately like, why has this not been sampled? This should be in every, you know. <laughs> It it has been. It's been it's been in a couple of rap songs. I know Timberland had a rap song with it, and um, uh, Busta Rhymes had one where he sampled the Night Rider theme song you too. Just, you could be driving the shittiest car <laughs> ever, and if this song, <laughs> yeah, and if this song is on while you're driving, you you feel you're so pimp. you feel so cool. I, I want my car to speak to me though. That's the one thing. Like the the promise of. The promise of Siri on the iPhone. I, I want my technology to speak back to me with Mr. Feeney's voice. That's what I want. I don't. <laughs> you know, by the way, that Kit was the Mr. voice Feeney. of Kit's Mr. Yeah. Feeney. Yeah, from Boy Meets World. Um, so the Knight Rider theme song, that one's pretty hip. Uh, and, and, of course, it's had a long life. You went right away, hey, this is the best theme song, and then you stuck with it even after we'd listened to 45 yeah, or 50. Yeah. yeah. And this is the rare... With lyrics. Yeah, but most people don't know that it has lyrics, and then it's Andy Griffith singing and doing the whistling for it. Uh, but yeah, I think the Andy Griffith show, uh, for this one simple fact, while there are more iconic, epic, sweeping theme songs like Dallas, uh, more poignant and thoughtful theme songs like uh, like the MASH theme song. Oh, that is that's another good one. Yeah. With lyrics, with with lyrics, the the one that I think is sung the most is the Andy Griffith Show. Everybody whistles it. You catch yourself whistling it, not even realizing it. And once you start whistling it, everyone in the room knows what you're whistling. Of course, uh, Andy Griffith just passed away last week, so this is this is why this one came back up. And I think you had found a new copy of the. Didn't you see a link? Somebody had posted this yeah, yeah. with the lyrics to it. Um, Andy doing the song. I, it's it is a great song. It's a very simple theme. It's a, it's something you can whistle or hum. Yeah. Or, you even you can whistle this one almost. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting real close. Getting real close. It's a great theme song. There's no doubt about it. What do you want out of a theme song? I mean, a, and why why have they gone away? We you and I watch together. We watch a shit ton of TV between the two of us, and and almost no modern show has a real theme song anymore. Well, because I think theme songs like if you. Um, if you think about the Andy Griffith show, there's two minutes of theme song and scene cuts and everything for that. Uh, now I think writers just need the room for content. Uh, yeah, because you're squeezing them out with commercials. Yeah. There's more commercial breaks now than there were yeah. before. HBO is one of the rare ones that's really stuck with the theme. And all of their shows that I can think of, correct me if I'm wrong, all of their shows, though, have not just a theme song, but like a full credit sequence. Yeah, but, that, they're, but they're also, an, the majority are an hour long. Yeah, a real hour. They're yeah. 57, 58 minutes or something. Yeah, so when you have something that's an hour long, and, and most uh, most TV shows are used to being... Like 42 minutes now for an hour? Yeah, or if think about it, if you're doing a 30-minute show. Yeah, it's like 22 minutes for a, for a sitcom. Right, so whenever you have that whole hour, that, those, those guys are like, oh, we have to have a theme song. There's no way. I just, I think about, well, I mean, we both watch Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is a great show anyway. But I think that comes down to expense. You mean their great credit sequence? I think I would like that theme even without... The, the credit sequence. Right, no, no, but I'm saying is you could do the theme with the with the sequence, right? You pay for that once, you get it for all the rest of the shows to where if you had to fill that with actual live show, then it starts getting expensive. You say that, but they change the title sequence almost every week based on where you go. they show a different location on the map when a new when a new area is up. focused. Right, but you'd have to think that that, that whole sequence was already done before the show started. Oh, and they, they just, just recut it. Right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. I, I do love, though, seeing the new uh, the new areas revealed. It reminded me of, did you ever watch the, the Adam West Batman in syndication when we were kids? Oh, yeah. Okay. Y- you remember when Batgirl was going to be on the episode, the title sequence would change? Kapow! Yeah, you'd see her her little motorcycle drive across the bottom of the, in the, like, the, the silhouette animation or whatever. Always... So I got so excited. I was, it's a Batgirl episode. I was a big fan of that series when I was a kid. Um, I love the idea that 
It's one of the reasons why our theme song, our, our little our little section where we do the vocal bits from this show, I try to change it up every couple of weeks to make it a little different. It's familiar and yet new every week. It's a little surprising. Sometimes it's a clip from this week's episode. Sometimes it's just from last week. So it's a new little giggle that you've gotten from the show or whatever. I think that's great. I love it when shows incorporate that. And now you have to keep doing it now that you've said it. Well, yeah. Our mutual friend's not going to let me live it down. I've, I let I let it sit for like three weeks in a row. I let the same intro go. And the third episode, when I sent our mutual friend the uh, the episode to listen to, hey, what do you think? Give me your give me your notes or whatever. He wrote me back and immediately said, you know, it's been three weeks with that same intro. Don't you think you want to change that up now? I'm like, motherfucker, you're not editing it. You come over here and edit a new intro sequence, why don't you? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, I told my wife uh, about us doing the new uh, – that we're doing the new hosting. And she's like, well, what do you – I mean, is that going to take you more time away from me? Or are you going to have to go do this? And I'm like, N- no, I don't. I don't do anything but talk. The one guy does all the editing. We, c- I don't care if we talk for three hours. I'm not doing shit. Yeah, no. You, you and I, your your exposure, your expense, your time spent on this project. You know, an hour and change a week recording. And then you give me notes. You do listen to the podcast, or you know, you spend time listening. But you do that with her most of the time. Yeah, and. I'm, I get to it so late. I, the last few weeks, you've gotten to it too late for me to do any edits. Or like, or like it'll be, it'll be Sunday. The whole podcast is published, and I'm still listening to the beta version, trying to get notes. Oh, nice. And I'm like, ah, fuck. I should just go to the real. I should just go to the real thing. Maybe, maybe he changed it anyway. Every now and again, I'll send you one. And then the changes are obvious, and so I'll make them. So you'll send me a note, and I'll be like, "Yeah, I already did that. It's in the it's in the real one." Um, we our turnaround's gotten pretty fast lately. We kind of went off the rails there. We were talking about TV show themes. When did we lose the theme songs? I don't. Was twenty four the first one, the first big one that didn't have any kind of fucking theme at all? You know that show, cold open every week with just the ticking clock. Effectively, they were like previously on 24. You do like the 30 seconds worth of what happened last week, and then there was the ticking clock into this week's episode. I'm trying to think of the last one that I remember with ER had a theme song, right? A full Seinfeld. credit sequence. Seinfeld had one. Seinfeld had one. Even you and I talked about last night. Friends. Frasier and Friends had yeah. one. Frasier's was very short, but it did have it. And then the full theme played at the end where Frasier sang it. Lost didn't have one. Lost, of course, had that that weird. Even the Simpsons have one. The big, yeah. Sim, well, of course, Simpsons been running for twenty five years yeah. now, or whatever. I, I'm trying to think of a CSI's got a theme song, right? It's like the Who or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Law and Order's got a great theme song. I to me, I think it was probably West about Wing. West Wing's got a good theme song, as does Sorkin's new show. Of course, it's on HBO though. I, I'm thinking that it might have been twenty four. Maybe there was something before that that broke the mold, but but to me, the first one that was a really popular show without any, even a hint at a theme song or the idea that, hey, there's a full version of this, we just don't have time to show it to you. 24 just was like, fuck that. You don't need it. We don't so, have time for I it. I feel like we've gotten a lot of mileage out of this topic. Yes. To show you how uninterested I am in it, I thought all shows still had theme songs. That's how much I pay attention. You live in in your DVR though. So like you are a man that skips forward in everything. Yeah, I couldn't tell yeah, I couldn't tell you what had a theme song or not. Yeah, you don't really pay attention to commercials either cuz you're just going to skip it. Like you just move forward to the next bit of actual entertainment that I want in my brain. Yeah, I pay for the DVR so I don't have to watch the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> the oh. dude who works in an advertising medium. I'm not very fond of you and your DVR. Yeah, well, I I'll, I'll a show will be recording and I could literally sit there and watch the show live. I will find myself something else to do for 15 minutes just so I can come back and watch it commercial free. Like the show starts at seven, like before it's like, oh, I got to be, you know, I got to have, you know, my soda and everything and be ready to watch this show at 655 because I don't want to miss fucking anything. And now it's like, fuck, what am I going to do till 715? <laughs> so I could start my show and skip through <laughs> yeah. it all. Nice. I guess I could do a load of laundry. <laughs> Get it started. What a di- what a difference a couple of years makes, man. Like I'm literally five six years ago. That's not a place that you could be. Five or six years ago, I didn't watch a whole lot of TV. Uh, the DVR. That's what it's done. The DVR has made you has allowed you to watch much more television since you can time squeeze it. The, the same. So you've still got two hours or three hours that you could devote to television, but now you can watch six shows in those two or three hours instead and watch of watch what I want to watch. Yes, 
as not opposed feel like to just I'm wasting time. Yeah, just what happens to be on. Like this six hours of television has already been allotted for this week. Yeah, and I know what it is, and yeah. I know that all of them are going to be good episodes because that's more my style. I don't watch a thing that I'm that I don't know for a fact that I'm going to like. You're not that way. You it, the week to week you might not enjoy it. You didn't enjoy the second week of uh, the newsroom or whatever the new Sorkin show. It was just a lot of. A lot of fast dialogue in a way that I don't think people actually talk. Like you have a conversation like, okay, I'm, I'm about to have to go in and talk to blah, blah, blah about yada, yada. Here's how I'm going to open up. This is what they're going to say. This is what I'm going to say. This is what they're going to say. This is what I'm going to say. And there's really no time for pauses or thoughts or anything in your imagination. Right. It, people never talk to each other like that, ever. And Sorkin writes like that. I tend to think a lot of people do. I no, th- what? I don't think people listen. I think mostly people speak and then they wait quietly and think about what they're going to say next while the other person How speaks. How the fuck do you know what you're going to respond to if you haven't heard what the, rep- what the person's going to say? I think most people don't care what the other person says. Oh, they they I are disagree. on. I think good conversation happens the way that you're talking about. You and I can sit in a room. And you can say a thing, I and I can be quiet. I'm going to have spaghetti tonight, by the way. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. Why? Well, I stopped listening to you. I was just thinking what I was going to say next. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I was gone this past weekend to a bachelor party. You know, I've never been to one. I've been to 14 in four years. You're a frat guy. That's where a lot of that comes from. You have an organized group of past associations and friends that you have a ledger of favors to and from that will be called to account. I don't have an organized group of friends. I have a very loose group of friends that if I just want to dodge, I fall off their radar. (laughs) I've come to realize I have passed through party puberty. I'm done with it. Okay. Much like you pass through when you're going through puberty literally the only thing you can think about is sex right it's all little dudes think about you can't help it that's just the way it is and at some point in people's lives they they go through what i think of as party puberty some a little earlier than others some a little late than most but everybody at some point goes through party puberty i've been through it so now when my friends are out partying cool i'll hang out to maybe 11 then i'm ready to go to bed Because for me now, I've got to recoup 48 hours before I'm feeling normal again if I party like these cats, man. So that's party puberty? Yeah, I'm not not out there partying like I was. Like in college, my party puberty years were probably six, seven years long. From about 18 to, like you didn't, you weren't a partier in high school? No, I mean, I was being introduced to partying in high school. I didn't start hardcore partying until college. I was a good guy in yeah. high school. I didn't I did, I didn't go out much. I mean, I had friends and like we would, people would hang out at my house, like house. And we played pinochle hot pockets. Well, no. Bagel bites, they were delicious. My mom always did have great snacks at the house and we always had like good cable and like we were always welcome to go get movies and stuff like that and we had all the you know, video game systems whatever. So people would come over. I'd have friends over, we'd hang out a lot at my house. My house, my mom was a cool mom. She was funny. She didn't bother us. So my house was a place to hang out. I didn't go out. I didn't party much. When I got to college, I got way into it. And I, yeah, because you went through your party puberty years. Yeah. The people Two, who three. party in high school, right? Like mid- midway through college, they're done. Yeah, they kind of burn out already. Yeah, because they went through their party puberty. That makes sense. Yeah. How long ago do you think yours ended? I think for most people who come to it in college, right around 25, man, is when you kind of hit that wall. I tried to explain that to my wife at one point because she's quite a few years younger than me. And uh, she would always be like, hey, come out. Let's go to the bar. Let's go to the club. Let's." And I'm like, no. It's like, look, you go out with your friends. You have fun. You need to ride around 2 a.m. Call me. I'll come get you. But I'm not staying up that late to it's, drink some beer. And she's like, but you don't have anything special to do tomorrow. And you're like, yeah, but I got something special <laughs> to do the next yeah, day. Exactly. Exactly. So she, didn't, so she didn't get it. Not three weeks after she hit 25. She partied for her 25th birthday, partied hard, and then literally the next time that that came up and they had to go out and party again, hit her like a ton of bricks, man. Nice. Like she understood. And everybody, eventually everybody hits it, man. Everybody hits it at some point. I slowed down from mine, I guess, 
probably right around the time I got married. So that would have been 22 or 23. I went a little early. Yeah, but after the divorce. Yeah, I got another couple of years. Yeah. Yes. Yours, mine was prematurely shortened by a, by, a, uh, by a marriage, and then afterwards I got a little second wind or right. whatever. It, the second wind didn't last nearly as long as the first bout, though. Yeah, because you've gotten older. Yeah, about eight or nine months, and I got that shit out of my system real quick. I'm still old. It Things hurt when I stay out too late. Everything hurts. You wake up the next day, and it feels like, like I ran the fuck over. <laughs> oh, who, who beat me in my sleep? I, dude, I, I take naps now, man. I still can't take naps. I love naps. That and a beard. Those are the two parts of adulthood I'm really fucking looking <laughs> forward to. I mean, I've had this little shit on my chin since I was 17. Since I graduated high school. As soon as I graduated high school, my high school wouldn't allow you to have any facial hair. So I said, and they also wouldn't allow you to have hair below your earlobes. So I said... As soon as I leave this hellhole, that was my big rebellious streak. Was like, as soon as I graduate from this hellhole, and it wasn't that bad. As soon as I graduate, I'm going to grow my hair out and grow a beard, man. I'm going to be – yeah, I did grow my hair out. That's true. I had really, really long hair for a while. No fucking beard. Still can't grow a damn thing. You're uh, – I got a good neck beard going. Your chin, though, looks like my ball sack when I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how thick and full that thing is. It's not. It's not thick and full at all, man. And I've been growing this, honest to God, 13 years now. 13 really? years I've had hair on my chin. Yeah, 13 oh. years I've had hair on my chin. It never. It's never gotten any thicker than this. I could. I could shave everything and literally look like this again next week. Is that in seven days you can have a a reasonably full beard? Yeah. And three, I, I got a pretty good like. Like rugged look going on. Supposedly we've got a little like Native American heritage or whatever, and none of the men in our family can grow very nice. My dad's 63. He wears a full beard a lot of the time now, most of the time, truthfully. But even now it takes him, like if he shaves down to to, to his face, if he shaves fresh, it'll take a month before it's really full again. And even then, he would say it's not, it's like, oh, it's a scrawny beard. I think it looks fine. I think it looks about as good as yours does, but that's a month worth of work, and you can do it in a week. Ugh, he's sixty three. I got no hope. <laughs> You're done. Yeah, deal with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have ball sack chin for the rest of my life, apparently. All right, uh, that's another show in the can. Look at that shit. I'm one guy, and I'm the other, and this has been the podcast.